Over the last three weeks, I've done a whistle stop tour of all the brand new armor sets added and some of the old ones that have been a part of the Creation Club for a good few years now. But to many of you who bought the anniversary edition, they've been pretty new. So here is a whistle stop tour to give you a little reminder in case you missed any of them and pretty much show you the wide depth of armors. I'm going to show you pretty much how to get them. This isn't a showcase just to look at some armor sets. This is more or less how to start off the mission so you can go get them yourselves and anything you might really need to know when you embark on one of these quests. If you need more details or having trouble, go back and watch the individual videos that I did for every single one of these, including the big longer quests as well. But otherwise, this is just a heads up in case you missed anything or something takes your fancy and you want to go and get it really quick and easy. Also, let me know your favorite armor set as part of the Creation Club that got added, not just the van generic vanilla stuff. And the 10 most mentioned ones in the comment section will go through to a public vote on my community tab and I'll do a special video about it. For the spell armor quest, you need to head to the inn at Markav and then inside on the right hand side, one rooms, you'll find this journal on a table. After a run in with a ghost, you'll quickly follow it to fight off some Forsworn and Ravagers. One of the shaman will have the recipe for the iron version of the spell armor. After heading to a medium to hard location, fight multiple forsworn as well as a bunch of hags, you'll eventually return what's needed to claim the next two sets of armor. The steels version won't be enchanted, but the ebony version will be. And here's the rub. If you decide to cleanse the heart before returning it to where it's meant to go, you'll get a different set of armor. Restoration spells are going to cost 25% less than the gauntlets. You'll get an increase of magic resistance by 22% on the helmet. The boots increase your stamina by 70 points and you get heavy armor increase of 25 points wearing the main armor. If you don't cleanse the heart, instead you get one-handed attacks doing 40% more damage on the main armor piece. Then carrying capacity increased by 50 points on the boots magic up by 70 points on the helmet and destruction spells 25% less to cost on the gauntlets. It's not too mad or extravagant but one of my faves. Next up we've got the Daedric Plated and Daedric Mail. In the dungeon underneath Dragon Reach you'll read Death of a Crimson Dirk. Fast begins beyond the grave. After a bit of grave robbery on the way you'll eventually come to Knife Point Ridge and after tackling the head bounty hunter you can take the armour off of him. The main armor piece is going to reduce your illusion cost by 20%. Then you've got the helmet, which is going to give you 50 points off health. That's pretty much it. The other pieces are just part of the base game. It's only two pieces of plate armor in this section. For the male pieces, you need to go and read a special note that's in Candleworth Hall in Windhelm. This will begin the missing merchant quest. Eventually, you'll take out some bandits, and the thing you're looking for is the Ring of Massa. Once you give that to the Khajiit outside Windhelm, they'll give you the full set of Daedric Mail Armor, which has no enchantments on it, it's just a complete set that you can do what you want with. Also at Candle Hearth Hall in Windhelm, you'll find the details for the Dragon Armor. Find the book The Crimson Dirks, Volume 4. After taking out a few skeletons and Ulfla bone skin, you'll find it behind a locked gate. It's a complete, unenchanted set of studded Dragon Scale Armor. For the special dragon plate armor, you need to look for a quest from innkeepers called Bones for a Crow, and that'll take you to Darklight Tower. The tower itself is filled with necromancers and hags, but if you can skip around it by jumping up the mountainside, eventually you'll get to Lunel, who'll tell you to go to Arkwind Point. You need to take care of some Deathlord Draugr as well as some thieves before eventually uncovering an armor set at the top of the tower from Bjormund Windstrider. It's also worth pointing out this quest has changed, there was a bunch of different weapons that you could also get by killing the bandits, but they look like they've been removed and it's purely just the armour pieces now. There's actually two curacies, you've got the dragon bone mail which increases fire resistance by 100% and you've got an insulated curos that sometimes drops as well. Although it's worth noting it's not always guaranteed, but you will be able to craft them yourself, but I couldn't find any insulated armour pieces. The boots increase carrying capacity by 40 points, the helmet your health by 50 points, and the gauntlets are going to give you a two-handed attacks and extra 30% damage. At the inn at Markov, on the bar, you'll find a note directing you to Reachwind Eerie. A few bandits outside, as well as a hidden one in, and you'll be able to pick up the dwarven plated armor set. Just outside Iverstad to the south, you'll find a body on top of a wood log and a note directing you to the ruins of Batalft. If you go here directly, look out for a orc and you've got to take care of him and pick up the dwarven mail set. Both of these armor sets are unenchanted, so you can go and do what you want with them. Hands down, one of my new favorite headpieces is the Starlim fur armor set. 
going to be heading north to Skull on Solheim. And just southwest, you should find an encampment with a journal on it. After taking out a thief, you'll find all the armed pieces inside, and it's pretty cool looking. I really, really love this helmet. It's one of my favourites. Just FYI, no enchantments on this one. Read the journal on the table in Falkreath Barracks and head over close to Sunderstone Gorge, which is just northwest of Falkreath. Take care of Aeswell and they'll have a key to a chest nearby, where you'll pick up the Elven Hunter set, all unenchanted pieces. But sadly, there's no helmet with this set. To get the Grey Fox Cow, you need to head to Riften and find the thief inside the graveyard. A bunch of sneak and thievery quests later, as well as a fairly big large dungeon crawl through, and you'll get the Ancestral Blades that you need to take back to the graveyard. The final dungeon for that Ancestral Blade is the Silver Drift Lair. Turn it to the graveside and you can swap it over for the Grey Cowl of Nocturnal. Sneaking 25% better, carrying capacity increased by 50 points and you can sense nearby living creatures. It's an absolute must have when you're looking for certain things in the wild, but don't wear it in any cities or towns as the guards will attack you instantly even when you have unequipped it. Just southwest of Windhelm stables you should find the Ebony Warrior. If not, go and talk to a beggar in Windhelm and they'll give you the location direct. Tyra Bloodfire is her name and she'll have the ebony plated armor set on her once you defeat her. Main piece increases your health by 50 points. Gauntlets give 30% more damage for one handed attacks. The boots will give you stamina regeneration at 30% quicker and the heavy armor skills increase by 20 points when you wear the helmet. It's certainly a bit cooler looking than the regular ebony armor. If you're looking more versatility for unarmed or melee builds, then go and grab the Fists of Rangaluf. You're going to be taking out a big frost spider here, as well as a bunch of other small spiders in the contest. Head to Candleworth Hall in Windhelm. There'll be a journal on the table in the bar upstairs. Caught in the web begins, and Krongavar Cave is where you're going to be heading next, just south of Windhelm. Oh, did I mention you'll fight a ton of vampires in this place as well? And FYI, this is where you can get a spider as a pet too. Once you've taken the big mother spider out, you'll see the ghosts pretty much disappear. The fists themselves do 20% extra melee damage and 20% extra damage with shield. And you will also get a special ice blade of the monarch from the other ghost. South of Winterhold Cottage, you've got the Night Gate Inn. This is how we're going to get the Iron Plated Armor Set, which is enchanted. The Brothers in Arms quest takes you to the west of Solitude to Rhinebarrow Rock and pretty much on the coast you come up against a wizard and a few extra bandits. Loot the body pay liars and you'll get the iron pleated armor set. Carrying capacity increase, one handed attack increase and then you've also got block damage increasing with your shield as well as heavy armor skill raised by 17 points so I fear fairly decent. Obviously the iron armors you can craft early in the game and you'll get lots lots of sets of these from just randoms but this full set is guaranteed here. Next it's west of Dawnstar to Dragonbridge and there's a note on the table that's going to direct you down to a corpse at the bottom of the river. So you're going to have to follow that, pick up the notes from the corpse and then back up to the same inn before eventually taking on Paladus on Dragonbridge itself. This is how you get the steel soldier armor set. You'll increase your magic resistance with the full set of armor. You'll also get a buff to fire resistance with the helmet by 40%, which is quite big compared to some others. 25% extra damage with your shield with the gauntlets, and then you're going to get stamina regenerating 20% faster with the boots. Staying in the same area, just go south of Dragon Bridge and you'll find the cliffside retreat. Read the note that's on the barrel and then it's going to take you back to Solitude to the Temple of the Divines. Eventually you'll go to the Lost Echo Cave with a little optional side quest. Once you're there, take on the Evil Sahara, I'm guessing Chair Evil, and you'll pick up the Leather Scout set which does 25% extra bow damage, light armor increase by 17 points, and then you've also got a big jump in pickpocket success, 25% with the gauntlets, and then the boots going to give you stamina extra 40 points. For Thieves, it's not necessarily a must, but it could be a fairly decent early game. Next up, you're in the inn as soon as you enter Whiterun on the left, which will take you to the Dragon Reach dungeons where you read another note which can be hard to spot just on the side of the actual chest. It will take you to close to Bleak Wind Bluff, and inside you'll find a house after you've killed some skeevers, the Silver Armor Set. It's unenchanted, but it does look pretty cool. You will have to face off against a few more enemies as soon as you leave the house as well, but yeah, it's a pretty cool looking set, well, definitely one of my faves. 
Next it's up to Solfheim where we're going to be picking up more Netch armor. Go north of Skull Village to this location here and you'll find a body on this encampment. On the body itself we'll have the Peddler's Journal and pretty much you're going to go and need to talk to these guys, the Reichlings nearby and they'll ask you for some proper leather to give to them and then you can go ahead and get a key to a chest that gives you the painted Netch armor. Then back to Skyrim and go to Fort Hagristed just west of Solitude. There'll be plenty of bandits outside as well as in, but directly inside the first entrance you'll find a chest with more of the shadowed and netch leather armours. You also have the boots of blinding speed, which give you a huge boost, but do make you blind unless you've got some sort of other buff that you can see in the dark. In my full guide, I coined this the ugliest armour set. I said what I said. Off to Riften now and the guard barracks Misfil Keep and we're going to find a note directing us to go and get some Orcish plated and mail sets of armour. Just south of Windhelm, Crags Lane Cavern is where you need to go and you'll be taking on a bunch of gamblers. This will give you a note. You've pretty much got to go and convince someone in an inn at Riften to give you the Orcish scaled armour. Or you can go and follow him eventually and take it off of him or even pay him gold for it. No enchantments on this stuff. Then it's off to the small guard barracks at Whiterun, read the manual and then we're going to do Smith and Slash mission which has us going south of Whiterun to the Embershard mine and taking in again more bandits. The majority of the bandits will have the plate versions of the armour in this one and they look pretty cool. They should be various different enchantments on them so I won't bother listing them off, it'll probably depend on RNG for you as I do believe they're not an essential set like some of the others. And yes, I'm sorry I showed them off in the dark when I previously recorded. The Red Guard Armaments is a set of different armors and a bunch of weapons that you can get by completing a fairly long quest. Head to Shore Stone and eventually when you get there you will find this dude who wants to have a bit of a fight with you. You then have to wait a bit of time for the mission interception to begin and you'll be delivered a note by Courier. Then it's south of Markov at Pure Water Run to speak to the leader of the Remnant Armaments. Red Guard, Remnant, you get the idea. You'll have to go and talk to two NPCs in various places around Skyrim, pretty much getting spy notes from them. Eventually when you return to the dude, he'll give you access to a whole chest filled with the remnant scimitar as well as obviously the armour pieces. Then after that you've got to pretty much ambush a bunch of dudes taking a prisoner away. There's a couple of unique swords that you can get, the Bone Shredder or Bone Buyer or Bone Something, as well as the Remnant Shimitar, which does fire damage, before returning back to Fijar, and that is pretty much it complete. You get an increase of light armor skill by 17 points for the main armor, 25% sneaking, 25% more damage, as well as 17% more illusion costs reduced when you wear the hood. Off to Windhelm and you're looking for the corner store right in the very, very corner on the right hand side as soon as you enter the corner club. There should be a note talking about the red caravan. You're basically investigating caravan wreckages looking for clues to the final area. Before a quick stop off at the Horde of the Dead in Whiterun. To eventually go into the Sightless Pit which is just south of Winterhold. You'll fight various different types of Falma as well as some Dwarven Guardians in this place and take care of some puzzles involving Steam. And then once you take care of them you'll eventually unlock the Wraith Guards. It does come with a special hammer as well called Sunder. It gives you a big all round bonus in resisting Frost, Fire, Shock and a bunch more including Poison so I like this one a lot. Next it's the Vigil armor sets including the Corrupted version which I really like and a Wolf shaped helmet which is totally badass. Head south of Dawnstar to the Hall of the Vigilant and you should find some burned out bodies in the wreckage of a house if you've gone past level 10. If you're below or before level 10 then they should be alive and you can talk to them and still get the mission. Some more running around places near Dawnstar and eventually you've got to decide which one of three suspects is potentially in league with vampires. They'll lead you to a massive chamber inside a mine and it's up to you to take them all out and claim the new armors. Among the bodies you'll find the corrupted set, you'll find the enforcer set which is just a little bit more plain and you do find these often on just random dudes while exploring Skyrim with this kit enabled but yeah to get full complete guaranteed sets this is where you head to. Just make sure you investigate a body with all of the rest of the silver visual armor set on. And that's the cool looking wolf helmet version. 
There's a whole bunch of different brawler sets of bracers and gauntlets that you can go ahead and buy from various merchants and some of the Khajiit that you find across the world. You also find them randomly scattered in the loot pool in lots of quests too. They're meant to be for unarmed and melee builds, a little bit more focus on, but we've kind of discovered they're still a little bit weak source. Pure looks alone though, some of them are absolutely cool looking, but yeah, in terms of what they actually offer, you'd really have to go to some good lengths to make your build as good as it can be focused on melee, rather than just getting an immediate buff by using these. That said, you'll often come across enchanted ones in a loot pool when you're completing quests, so yeah, you might get lucky with some of these, or go ahead and add your own once you're fully high level powered. Technically not armour, but jewellery, the Nordic version of jewellery you can go and actually get a recipe for on Stalfheim. Once you come across some bandits just outside the docks area, you'll find a journal that allow you to now craft Nordic jewellery whenever you want. The Bitter Cup is a free ending story quest, i.e. you get to choose what you want and that's it. You can't go back and earn what else is left. Pretty much choosing between wealth, power and having a companion. Inside one of the inns at Falkreath you find a mysterious altar book or go to the roadside ruins. You'll find the strange Bitter Cup itself and you pretty much got to choose here and there. Now for this video we want the actual middle bowl which is going to give you the power option and you can earn some pretty cool looking gladiator style armour pieces. It's the pit and you've pretty much got to fight your way out of gladiatorial arena. This is where you can get the grand champion's helmet and it's pretty cool. Don't believe there's any enchantments on it though so you can go ahead and do what you want with it. The Crusader armour is great looking but terrible to actually wear unless you're going to be living the life of a saint. Head east of Markov to the Fort Skull Lookout and take care of all the bandits. You in fact get two sets, the Curus of the Crusader and just the plain Crusader stuff. And on the body next to it you'll also get a reforged Crusader arm set. Both are great, they've got various different buffs and stuff on them. However, if you commit any kind of crime while wearing them, you pretty much will not be able to use them. Not the full set anyway, you get a debuff that reduces your stamina by 300% regeneration. So pretty much you won't have stamina ever. And it reduces your carry weight as well. So what's the point? I guess for real hardcore players who are doing a holy playthrough where they won't commit any crimes, even running over a rabbit by accident, or maybe even stealing or hitting a guard while you're having a fight with someone else. If you do any kind of crime like that, you pretty much have to go and pray to nine different shrines to cleanse the armor set, and you can't have any kind of crime in between that, otherwise it resets the progress. You can't even cheat by going to the Temple of the Divine in Solitude, as it has to be individual ones marked out on the map. And if you do manage to commit a crime, well, it actually takes away the progress for you, so it doesn't show you on the map where to go again which pretty much means you need to memorize exactly each one of the actual places to go and pray for every shrine. So a great looking armor set, both of them are fantastic, particularly the more traditional Crusader version, but absolute terrible, terrible penalties just for doing something stupid sometimes like committing a crime. Such a shame as well because it's got a really unique piece where it goes on your shoulder. It doesn't count as a shield, but it looks like one and it just acts as extra defense buff. So technically, not the only way that you can get this armor set, in fact you can get it vanilla, but Blade's armor is pretty rare and this creation kit quest does give you the chance to earn it. You head to Riften Sewers and you follow a ghost and pretty much you have to get two ghosts to get back together again. Ah, Of course you will earn the Blade Dustfang and Dawnfang, a dual blade use and the opportunity to go and get blood first if you go and watch the video. But you will also get a set of four blades armor, which normally don't get until you've completed Alduin's Wall later on in the game. You also get a pretty cool blade sword with it as well, and I really like the look of this one, so it's definitely worth getting earlier on. Completing the quest to unlock Gallows Hall gets you two unique bone helms. Head southwest of Windhelm to Mara's Eye Pond. Inside a cave you'll find a room and pretty much you're stuck in here now until you complete this quest. You pretty much have to solve a series of puzzles and moving torches around in the right manner or making sure the right ones are lit. You also have to sleep overnight to proceed part of this quest which I think I left out in the original video. But eventually once you get through the poltergeists you can get the blood worm helm which gives you extra conjuration uh, reduction as well as damage against the undead and the Helm of Orlin Berglor, which regenerates your stamina 20% faster. 
and gives you another additional 70 points of stamina also, plus a bunch of summon spells as well. And it's technically a new home for you to have as your own, with the only actual summon altar where you can actually summon a proper summons creature that will last longer than 60 seconds when you add the right ingredients. So the main focus of this one is obviously getting yourself a reindeer as a mount. However, if you do go west to the Windwood Ruins just of Dawnstar, you will find pretty much Santa Claus. And yes, you can take Santa Claus clothing. Actually, you buy them from him. A purely clothing for roleplay, no armor defense, nothing like that. But yeah, if you really want to look a little bit more like a Nordish Santa Claus, go for it. The Necromantic Gourmore, try and say that 10 times, offers you a chance to get a whole bunch of summon spells. But the most important thing for me was how I looked in getting a special robe set. There's actually two sets. The most common you'll find pretty much clearing out anywhere that's got some Necromages and hopefully you'll get one spawn. And then you've got the Elite versions which have these lovely blue hieroglyphics on them. Now again, these are supposedly a Radiant Drops. So you're not guaranteed to always get them. But we're going to be heading over to the east of Dawnstar to Jungvild, clearing out a pretty tough dungeon, hopefully will eventually get you to this final encounter and he will drop the right ropes. If he doesn't, you've lucked out. Most times people have been telling me that they did get this set here, whereas other places they never did get it. It took me ages to find this, in fact I was playing for about 6 hours before I got my elite ones. Super cool, really love them, even the plain ones look nice. Hands down, one of my favourite to use, purely because it's so functional and great, is the Lord's Mail, which pretty much sucks the lifeblood force out of anyone that comes close to it. You need to go and get the note for it from Solitude in General Tullus's castle, and on the table you should find a note from Kirnalaf. Take out an NPC and some bears, and it should be in a locked chest. But it is cursed, so you're going to have to actually cleanse it first. Bring it to the Temple of Divines and pray at the Bella and it should cleanse it and it gives you a huge amount of good stuff. Taking 5 points of health from enemies nearby, increasing your poison resistance by 75% and your magic resistance by 17%. I love the way it looks and it has really served me well. I haven't had to heal up nowhere near as much while wearing this. Saints and Seducers quest which you get from the Khajiit just outside of Whiterun will begin a pretty lengthy process but eventually you'll be able to unlock making dark armours as well as golden ones plus the ability to get also amber armour and madness themed armour sets and weapons. There's a few missions involved that all tail off from the Saints and Seducers quest so start there and then click every mission that pops up afterwards and eventually you'll learn how to craft and make some of this stuff yourself. Forgotten Seasons gives you the chance to get some pretty unique dwarven headgear as well as an armor set by going to the runoff caverns just sort of northwest of Falkreef. It's a huge undertaking and one of the biggest quests in the game for sure, involving at least three to four major dungeons with puzzles that you need to solve in different areas facing off against all sorts of different enemies. You're going to be looking for three masks like this one, the dwarven winter visage as well as a Dwarven Crown that you can slot them in and out to help with either your health, your magic or your stamina. And then of course we've got the armor set, Ward of the Seasons, which gives 10% resistance to pretty much everything, fire, frost, shock, poison, etc. Then you just simply use a bit of leather to craft whatever mask or crown you want, and it gives you double the amount of initial points. Otherwise you can wear the mask themselves just on their own equally as well. At the White Huntsman in Whiterun, on a bar you'll find a note that begins the Civil War Champions quest. You're effectively meant to choose a side, either the obviously Imperials or go ahead and side with the Stormcloaks. If you choose the Imperials, you can pretty much get access to the armour set almost straight away. It's fairly easy as long as you've got a persuasion score pretty high, otherwise you've got to convince him to let you join the army. And I like this armour set a lot, I think these are some of the most detailed and really really nice all over definitely got some of that Roman vibe going on. And eventually when you get to the battlefield you'll take out the other NPC enemy and you can go ahead and take the other set of armour so you won't miss out no matter what side you choose. The shield especially for the Stormcloaks looks absolutely badass. So yeah a really good vibe and definitely go with the champion's armour set that you might have got from Bittercup too. Another long lengthy quest to get hold of some of these armours you're going obviously back to Solvheim and after reading a blacksmith's note inside the temple, you'll be directed to this place here. It's a cave just outside Raven Rock and it begins a huge questline where you'll basically be tasked with joining a cult 
which you'll need to go and complete some other missions on Solheim to basically get hold of some special ropes to creep in unnoticed or just kill everyone inside the temple. The choice is yours, but once you get through, you'll be faced with a puzzle where you have to put different armor pieces on mannequins to access some special loot. On all of these mannequins, there's some unique armor sets all based on clothing from the past from Morrowind. There's a whole bunch of unique masks in this one as well. So there's a bunch of few key items here that I'm sure old timers will remember from playing Morrowind. And of course there is two decent armor sets here as well. The Endoral armor set and her hand armor. None of this lot is enchanted. If you do kill all of the acolytes and stuff that's actually just before this, then you might get some that's enchanted. But if you want some plain ones, then you know where to go. It's a quite a lengthy mission. Watch my guide on it. As said, it does require you going around and doing another batch of missions in Dwarven Ruins to get hold of the robes so you can sneak in here. And there we go. That is, as I think, every piece of armor that you really need to know about. I think I might have missed out possibly on Mythic Dawn robes, but I'm pretty sure you can pick them up almost anywhere. But that was really it. They don't really offer anything. There's no like bonuses on them and stuff. If there's any I missed, do leave me a note in the comment section. But hopefully I've included all from the major quests and pretty much anything. If it has been missed, you probably don't need to know about it too much. Like I said, vote comment your favorite newish kind of armor from the creation club over the last few years as part of anniversary and like i said it will go through to a public vote on the community tab and i'll do a video following up about it and thanks a lot for watching and all the support you guys have been smashing it new subscribers watching these on a daily basis that i've been putting them out i really appreciate it until next time